Let me ask you kind of a political question here, and as okay. honestly as you can answer this. Were you surprised with the appointment of Eric Brown? He is your Democratic opponent. He was already running for Chief Justice. Were you, appoint were you surprised with the appointment of him? No, I wasn't surprised. How has that been on the court and the working relationship with the court? Well, you know, I, I tell people that I have an opponent. I don't have an enemy. So we work for the people of Ohio. We don't have a choice in who we work with. So, you know, the court's business continues. Okay. Let's talk about uh, several recent cases if we can. And James uh, and Joe have covered uh, some of these extensively, so I'll have them jump in. But let's put the first one up here. Ohio businesses can now sue people in other states who post defamatory uh, comments about them on the Internet. The effects of this could be huge because it makes you accountable, potentially, for what you write on the web. This is an interesting case, Justice. Um, and you were one of those that thought that that was a good idea. Explain this case a little bit more. Well, you know, the court doesn't usually go beyond what is written in the opinion for an, an explanation. We speak through our opinions, and the contents of that opinion, I think, were very clear. Uh, there's a connection with the doing business in the state of Ohio. Uh, that's always been a, um, a hallmark or, or a justification for being able to include that entity or that person in the courts of Ohio. And that's basically what this case is all about. It's not saying there's a, um, uh, that the issues, the merits of the case are being resolved. It's where that case can be heard. And, and that's basically the sum and substance of the case. Gotcha. James. Um, in the other case that we've written about recently, I think it's on the um, board right there that um, basically employees who don't meet a certain minimum tenure requirement uh, can be dismissed if they take a pregnancy leave in this case was, was the issue. Um, it's kind of in line with an earlier ruling that the court made that said um, new mothers can't take an unauthorized break during the day to pump their breasts that they're lactating. Uh, both of those decisions were denounced by certain groups that mm -hmm. promote motherhood. Would you say the court is anti-mother as they're characterizing it, or how would you how would you um, characterize those two rulings? Well, uh, obviously, you're always going to have some sensational language attached to any opinion that the court writes by individuals or groups that are not pleased with the decision. In this case, it was not a focus on a woman who was pregnant. It was on the policy that was established and articulated and disseminated to all employees. I think uh, Justice Cupp used the phrase that the policy was pregnancy blind. It had very little to do with what the reason was that the employee took off or failed to show for, cor for um, uh, her work. It would have been the same had she had any other condition that would have precluded her from her job duties. So it happened to be a, a pregnancy issue here but it was equally applied to men and to women and, and uh, the condition was not the trigger. So as long as there is a, let's say you're a business and you put a one year, you have to work for the company for one year. Before you're entitled to the benefits of a leave, yes. And, but, but with the understanding that that's across the board. Exactly, so that's and that's what, this, that's what this uh, um, employment uh, policy was all about, that this is universally applied. And the law requires that you do not discriminate against a woman who is pregnant, she, but you also do not uh, afford favoritism. Mm. The law does not require or advance favoritism. It has to be an equal application. And that's what this case uh, was based upon, and that's what uh, Justice Cupp acknowledged in writing the majority. One of the things I'm wondering, um, we know that former Chief Justice Tom Moyer, one of his major issues, he talked a lot about ma merit selection mm -hmm. and trying to bring um, at least the perception of fairness back to the court. Now that he's gone, um, do you see yourself taking any lead in that issue or doing anything with that issue? And if not, who do you think on the court might step up and try to uh, deal with that? Well, it's first of all not just an issue for the court. And, and that's what I think uh, the conference that was uh, put together last fall indicates, that this is a broad-based approach to how we select the judiciary, and we select the judiciary through a constitutional 
process, and it would require a constitutional amendment. So this is not something the judges or the Supreme Court can, by fiat, determine what they would like to do. So it has to get broad based support if it's going to be put on the ballot and then the electorate in Ohio needs to vote on it. I'm a big proponent for let's put it on the ballot. Let's devise a system that is an alternative to what we have and let's put it before the people and stop all of the, you know, back and forth about whether we should have merit selection or we should have elected process. It's not my opinion nor your opinion that matters. It's what the people of Ohio want and they ought to be given a chance to weigh in on this. Let me, if I can, follow up on Joe's question uh, and, and get a little bit more philosophical uh, on this. Uh, if we can, uh, here's actually a quote from Tom Warrior. He said, the goal is to get money out of the election process for judges. This is the best chance we've had in my 23 years on the bench. That was a quote from uh, late last year. The philosophical argument that he laid was, look, when you put money into judicial campaigns, there's always that even if it's not factually true, there's always that possibility that it will be viewed at the very least of having some kind of influence on potential cases mm -hmm. that come before the high court, the highest court in the state. On a philosophical level, beyond just putting it on the ballot, let me just take it a step further and ask you on a philosophical level, is it a good idea to remove that potential influence of campaign cash from Supreme Court justices? Well, I don't think that this is the uh, panacea that most people would suggest that it would be, and I'll give you an example. If we have a merit selection process, chances are it will require a retention election. And a retention election allows uh, for a positive vote for the one candidate that is on the ballot to be retained. In the event there's opposition to that candidate being retained on the ballot, there can be a tremendous flow of dollars to have a campaign waged against that individual or for that individual for retention. So this does not preclude uh, money into a judicial race, either pro or con. It's just a different type of judicial ballot. So it's not, as I said, a cure-all. Now, is it a problem with the races that are currently, well, it's a problem to raise money for a municipal race, a trial court race, uh, in the common pleas bench, the appellate bench, or the Supreme Court. It is part and parcel of the election process. Um, I, you know, in the midst of a campaign right now, one of the most difficult things and probably distasteful things that you do as a candidate is um, worry about fundraising so that you can get your message out to the voters. It's a necessary evil, unfortunately. Sort of the distasteful part of a campaign for Chief Justice that we can talk about and maybe part of the, the reason why Tom Moyer wanted to move away from this type of campaign. A couple accusations, counter accusations that we want to talk about and put on the table. Chief Justice Eric Brown accused of personally soliciting money for his campaign and Justice Maureen O'Connor, who's our guest today, accused him of endorsing another judicial candidate. We can't say on Eric Brown, an audio recording of the Chief Justice has him asking a supporter to attend a $1,000 a plate fundraiser. Um, and then Justice O'Connor, uh, the counter charge against you from the Democratic Party is that you're in violation of a rule prohibiting political endorsement by judges, which I guess, two questions here. Uh, what do you feel about the political endorsement uh, and th that complaint made against you? Well, I think that it probably would be best because this is being investigated uh, according to the rules that uh, apply to justices uh, and candidates for the uh, the court to just let the process take care of it. Okay. Uh, was there any endorsement that you recall? Was there a political endorsement? Well, I'm going to let the process take okay. care of it and I will answer the, um, uh, you know, the inquiries made. Any comment on the charges from Republicans against the Chief Justice here regarding uh, the $1,000 uh, alleged solicitation uh, for his campaign? No, it's got to be the same answer. We'll just let the process, that's why it's in place. One last question on it. Do you, I mean, is all of this kind of what Tom Moore was getting to, that maybe this could be avoided if merit selection, if we had appointment of judges rather than this? Uh, well, yeah, I, I think that you certainly wouldn't have uh, the fundraising uh, focus that uh, um, Eric Brown is subjected to. But you may very well have, uh, you know, some sort of a restriction on judges speaking about one another. I, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. James. Basically, the heart of that complaint that involves um, you and Justice Lanzinger had to do with um, 
remarks made at political dinners and so on. Um, so it's it's a really a very cordial relationship. Um, this, uh, Justice Lanziger and I are very good friends, but we do not agree on all topics. Oftentimes, we find ourselves on the opposite uh, sides of, of a case that's come before the court. What this all emphasizes is that it's judicial philosophy, and it's not your your party label, what you are personally as far as a Democrat or a Republican or whatever um, you're registered, that's left at the door.